Good afternoon, everybody. It's Stephen Crazy Paul from WinExtra bringing you your daily brief for February 11th, 2011. Now, before we, we get any further, I just want to... I'm crazy. I'm... You are crazy. I'm crazy. We're all crazy. Yes. Yeah, I suppose you got to be ha- you got to be crazy to be a sort of a full time blogger. <laughs> it, it it helps and it definitely helps. Anyway, I just wanted to mention to those of you that might not have visited the the site recently, or you get you know your the video from YouTube or whatever. Um, Winx is now sporting a nice shiny new logo. Much thanks to Paul there for his hard work. It looks super. Got some good comments yes. on it already, so thank you, Paul. Greatly appreciated. Very, very difficult. I think. Um, that will cost you. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know it's going to cost me. It's going to cost me large. I know it. Yes, not the old fact. Now, before we get to the obvious big news of the day, uh, you have up here um, the first legal shots fired at Google's. VP8 codec. Explain why this is important, please. Because it affects the browser landscape. Yes. We have IE9 RC is just out, okay? Uh, IE usage is declining everywhere, mostly at the, mostly because Chrome is uh, eating up market share left, right, and center, while Firefox kind of holds in there steady. Uh, IE8 is the browser at the moment for Microsoft that is growing market share faster than anything else, but still, you know, overall everything is declining. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the news that Google has decided to drop H264 sorry, support from um, from Chrome OS, from Chrome, and H264 is like the de facto video standard online. You watch something on YouTube, H.264. You watch it on your cell phone, H.264. That is the de facto standard. Now, there are other standards out there like, um, you know, M- M- Google's one, which is the um, uh, VP8. and uh, But they've yet to be tested legally. Yeah. And now... MPEG LA, the guys who own all the patent, well, they're they're the patent holding group for uh, for H.264, and basically what they do is, if you are Microsoft or you are Google or you are somebody really big like that, you pay them a license fee, and that license fee is only guaranteed. Is it's actually in the agreement that that can only go up five percent every time this thing is reissued. So it's not like they can turn around and just say, you know, well. Th- Last year we charged twenty million. This year we want twenty million. They can't do that. But Google has been moving away from that, saying we want open, we want this, we want that. But now MPEG LA have come across and they say, okay, everybody who has patents that may possibly um, define this, come to us. And obviously, and these people will come out of the woodwork because. It means cash yeah. if Google has to do a settlement. And it means big cash if Google has to do a settlement. But in the meantime, what it means is that Google has now said that they're going to remove the web standard, H.264, from Chrome, which means that you know it'll have to be implemented by a plugin or something. But they're going off down this development branch, which is targeted along VP8. But now they have to deal with legal issues. Now they have to deal with a legal battle. Now they have to think, well, hang on a minute. What if we're wrong here? What if we have to step back and change how we're doing things? It, and it affects everything. It's not just the browser, but it's things like YouTube as well. How is YouTube going to store its video? How are they going to code it there? How is it going to be deployed to your Internet Explorer, your Firefox, whatever? And it means that Google takes a lot of focus away from Chrome. Yeah. Because they have to focus on these things. Things which affect you and I as an end user because if we're using Chrome and we can't watch videos on, say, uh, Metacalf, then we got to get a plug-in. we got to yeah. get a codec, depending on what operating system you're using. And uh, so there's an opportunity here for Microsoft, for Firefox, for Opera. Now, I know that uh, ideologically uh, Firefox I- is in a different place. But if they switch on and start thinking financially rather than ideologically, and um, Opera, Microsoft, etc., 
to gain market share here while Microsoft, while Google is left with its head elsewhere yeah. while it's focusing on this. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to watch. And while I suppose in, in the ultimate you're right, this isn't incredibly directly Microsoft news, but it has a big impact on Microsoft yeah. and our sort of ecosystem and what we do as, as Windows users. Yeah. Uh, another big change in the uh, ecosphere uh, of mobile. <laughs> oh, dude. Did you just spit in your eye? I have a coffee cup with a bloody cap on it, right? Yep. So you can't... I don't know how, but coffee just managed to jump out of the tiny hole on the front of that and end up in my eye. That's a neat trick. That's special, that is. That's seven kinds of special. That is. Okay. For one kind of special. <laughs> Today's big news, obviously, was the fact that Nokia and Microsoft have announced, this is from the, the Microsoft's um, press release, Nokia and Microsoft announced plans for a broad strategic partnership to build a new global mobile ecosystem. Yeah, we said just over five months ago. Yeah, September 24th. Going, that, this, that this was going to happen. Yeah. But that it should happen. Of course, we also speculated about BlackBerry, but we ended up ditching that yeah. in, our, in our own speculations. Um, and now it finally comes to fruition. Okay, so here's the deal. Microsoft's not buying Nokia, and you know what? That's the right thing, too. Okay? There's still a lot of speculation out there that over the next 18 months they could buy Nokia, but that's not going to happen. That's not a good fit. Here's an interesting, and I was thinking about this. I, like, I had, like, I don't know, had 10 or 15 tabs open with different stories about you know, this, this deal. And given the breadth and the depth of the agreement... It struck me almost as if it was a uh, a purchase minus the regulator regulators. It well, was no, you know, because they cause have paid Nokia uh, hundreds of millions, whatever that means, of dollars to use Windows Phone Seven. <coughs> Excuse me. Nokia is reorganizing as a company from August uh, from April first. Mm -hmm. They're separating into two separate divisions. Nokia is still going to Nokia is going to spin off Migo uh, as an open source operating system uh, but still look to develop Migo for the future Symbian is pretty much dead Yeah, uh, but we'll probably see that on some very low end handsets I think the reason why this is uh, of course during the week we also had the announcement from Elop that he wanted to um, set up a virtual headquarters in the states mm-hmm um, and, and he is setting that up, and that is being headed up by another ex Microsofty. Yep. Um, I forget his name now. Uh, bum, 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 bum. You can find it there while I'm talking. I can't remember who he is. But he's an ex Microsofty as well. He's done something in between, but he had like 14 years at Microsoft. Um, but, you know, for Microsoft, or I should say for Nokia, this is awesome. I mean,. Nokia couldn't go down the road of using Android because then micro Nokia would have had nothing to distinguish well, themselves from everybody else. Apparently, apparently they were in discussions with Google at the same time that they were starting to talk with Microsoft, and you know there was yeah, the Google potential. Wouldn't have been, Google wouldn't have been the right fit. No, there no. are so many Android devices out yeah. there right now. What is the difference? Oh, it's a Nokia handset with Android. Look, it's another Samsung yeah. with Android. You know. Yeah. But these are Windows Phone 7 phones. Now, Nokia has, what, 37% of the world hand handset market? Uh, thereabouts. And Nokia has the one thing that Microsoft does not, which is why back five months ago we speculated about yeah. this and speculated about the purchasing. Um, they have the engineering know-how. They have the design talent, and they have the distribution channels, yeah, it, something that Microsoft doesn't have. Here's an interesting thing, too. Um, oh, shit, I just lost my train of thought. Choo -choo. Damn. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Gone. I you hate it when that happens. Out the other. Um, but you, here's the thing. Mary Jo Foley raised an interesting question, too. How, how is this going to affect... Uh, Microsoft's relationships with with people like LG and Samsung, 
or, it or whatever. It depends on it depends on the agreement they have in place with them. Yeah, that's basically what it comes down to. What we might see is um, tiered levels, possibly for OEMs. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you can run Windows Phone Seven, and you can have your hubs. But if you require more customization than that, yeah. Here, here's the other point that came up too: is that apparently with the agreement between Microsoft and uh, Nokia, Nokia has the unprecedented access to be able to customize it totally. Now, yeah. some are saying that they, they've got it and, and this isn't a good <laughs> idea, and others are saying that the chances of them actually using it is very, very slim. No, see, Nokia will not move too far away from the core Windows Phone Seven experience. No. Okay, but what you will see them do is make modifications that will allow it run on their handsets on cheaper devices. Yeah. Okay, because Nokia has a very strong market in the low end phones, and that's where they'll be looking to capitalize on this. Now, getting back to what you asked about the uh, the other handset manufacturers, there's only one or two things that I can really think of. Either they're going to walk, or you know, there might. Their agreement with Microsoft is flexible enough that you know they knew this getting into the getting yeah. into the game, so so to speak. Now, if Microsoft wants to bring a tiered thing in, we could sort of see, especially now that Mo Microsoft has this partnership with Nokia. Okay, yeah. give it six months and watch the handsets drill out and watch Windows Phone Seven um, increase, 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 increase. I think once the market share has increased enough. Microsoft will be in a position to say, okay, you guys want to partner with us again, okay, that's fine. You can do it one of two ways. You can do it, here's the um, here's the operating system and you can build into the hub, yeah. like they do right now, or if you'd like to have Nokia style uh, level of customization, then you have to let us do things our yeah. way. Oh, this is the point I wanted to make. One of the They'll points. use it as a power leverage in terms yeah. of updates and so on and so forth. You know? This is one of the points I wanted to make too and I, I just remembered it when I had lost before. Um, right now, part of the big problem with Windows Phone 7 is the update schedule. Now, we both know that the, the first update, the Nodo, it was ready in December. And the word is, is that it's primarily because the carriers aren't up to speed on supporting it. And you and I both talked about it yesterday and kind of went, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. carriers have been requesting things like custom ROMs for last minute changes that, and, all, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But and here's the thing. if the, With this deal with Nokia, and given the fact that Microsoft is setting up a whole new hardware unit to deal with Windows Phone 7 hardware. Could Microsoft just ditch all their existing carriers? And go or back could it? they say, look, we're bringing in an Apple style set of standards for the hardware and you either play along or we've got Nokia. It's a possibility. Well, they are tightly sort of controlling the, the hardware standards. I think what we're going to see is, uh, again, it comes back to this. I think Microsoft is never going to tell a carrier, you know what, we've got Nokia. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But what Microsoft might say to them is, look, okay, these are our hardware standards. You know what our hardware standards are and this is the level of customization you have. If you want more than that, if you want what Nokia has, you have to play by our rules. Yeah. You have to deliver updates when we and say And you know what? I and hope they do that. have tighter controls on hardware to stop all this stuff that has been going on for the last three months, which has prevented... Yeah. It's not the only thing that has prevented, but it's part of what has prevented the Windows Phone 7 updates uh, coming out in a timely fashion. Well, because you, both you and I heard or, or saw reference to the fact that... that Actually, as far back as as De well, December, Microsoft had the ne the roadmap and almost baked uh, updates for at least four or five. Yeah, and we still haven't received the first one. And yeah. this is part of it. But this move with Nokia or Nokia, depending on how you want to pronounce it, um, gives them a an extra chip. bit of leverage. Yeah. Because look, Microsoft's market share is very small right now. Okay, it's tiny right now. Yeah, Microsoft can afford to say to the carriers in the U.S., "Bye bye." Yep. Our market share is so small, we don't care about losing the U.S. Yeah. We've just got the biggest worldwide yeah. 
Well, it's it's like schools of access to us. Like one one post that really surprised me on this was from Robert Scoble last night, but he he pointed out um, Nokia has distribution. Distribution Google doesn't have yet. Nokia has dealers and stores in the weirdest places on earth. Places see, Apple let, doesn't. Let's, let's stop this here, right? Let's stop this here before you go any further. Will people please stop saying distribution Google doesn't have? Explain. Google created an open source operating system. Anybody puts it on anything yeah. you want. Yeah. But nobody had. Look, Apple works mentally absolutely crazy to tie down distribution. Mm -hmm. Okay? Microsoft doesn't have that. No. Now they have it. Yes, they do. In spades. In spades. And they've got, you know, the world's largest phone distributor, yeah. manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, in their belt uh, with unprecedented access to the thing. It's, it's the kind of situation where, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft just said to U.S. carriers, look, it, here's how you have it. If you want more customization, you've got to play by our rules. If you don't play by our rules, um, we don't care because we have Nokia. And Nokia is taking us to the rest of the world, which is far, far bigger and far more lucrative than yep. just the U.S. market, and, not, and, and, and not when just, that is so big outside the U.S. market, and not just consumer-wise, but also enterprise-wise, like yeah. you know, it's anyway. We we can we're we're running really short we on time here. We can about hours and go oh, yeah. through permutation after permutation after permutation. The fact is, it's big news, and we predicted it five months ago. Yes, we did. I like to roll that. In your bonus, eyes. bonus. <laughs> anyway, on that note, folks, we're going to get out of here. This is yeah, Daily. listen, if you want to let us know uh, what, what you, think? you think about the merger, um, leave us a show note, a comment, anywhere that you're watching us, whether it's on uh, the website itself, winextra.com, youtube.com, slash winextra, blip, dailybrief.blip.tv, or even, you know, pick up your phone, send us a text message, uh, leave us a voicemail. Um, what's our number again, Hudson? 251-281. 8730, and yes, I am reading it off the screen to my left because I haven't yet learned the new number. <laughs> and, um, yeah, of course, you can always just email us at podcast at winextra.com and tell us how right or wrong we are and what your thoughts are on the merger. Or even give Paul a thumbs up on the logo design, man. He deserves it. See everybody tomorrow. <laughs> Have a good one, folks. <laughs>